A wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat intriguing study that claims to have discovered evidence for a very bizarre type of a star, literally known as the strange star. And it's actually called that because of its properties and because what it's made out of, specifically strange quarks. And because in this case this is based on some of the more recent observations, and observations from a very peculiar explosion, surprisingly right now this is actually one of the best explanations. And so let's discuss this new discovery in more detail, but I guess let's start with the explosion itself first and why it was kind of strange. And well technically here there is not much to see, mostly because this was a gamma ray burst. And in this case a gamma ray burst that very likely happened billions of light years away from us, but was detected on May 29th, 2024. And just like with many other gamma ray bursts, this was almost right away picked up by a lot of different facilities. As a matter of fact, you can find the list of all of the reports about this event in one of the links in the description. There were 35 separate observations from different facilities and using different wavelengths. Which actually highlights that we've technically entered the golden era for various detections in astronomy and specifically detections of gamma ray bursts. But when it comes to the origin of these events, there are still some unanswered questions. And specifically questions in regards to their origins because a lot of gamma ray bursts produce different observations. Some of them can be very short, some of them last much longer, and some of them produce different wavelengths. And so today scientists believe that there might be at least four separate sources. The first obvious one is a massive supernova, or specifically a star collapse, that produces two very powerful jets. Or maybe this is some kind of a very powerful black hole, specifically a hyperaquatic black hole, that's spinning very rapidly and produces powerful jets as a result. Or this is a collision of two neutron stars, which has been previously detected and confirmed to cause short gamma ray bursts. Or lastly, this could also be the result of some kind of a magnetized neutron star or a millisecond magnetar that seems to undergo some kind of a major change. And so depending on the source, gamma ray bursts might appear a little bit different. And well, the thing is, this recent gamma ray burst was actually kind of bizarre. And here it was bizarre because it seemed to produce several separate emissions. And specifically, it seems to have produced two separate episodes with approximately 400 seconds of quiet time between them, as if there were actually two explosions. This was observed by different telescopes and confirmed by different studies. And so this bizarre event with 400 seconds of quiet time doesn't actually make a lot of sense, at least using previous explanations involving black holes, colliding neutron stars, magnetars, or supernova. Here's actually one of these previous observations that even shows us potentially another event that happened approximately 100 seconds after the first explosion. And so in this recent study, Xiao Tiang and his team proposed a really intriguing explanation that kind of matches all of the observations. What if this was actually a formation of a very bizarre object we usually call a strange star? A theoretical concept in physics where basically as stars get more and more density, at some point even neutron stars start to change into something else, changing all of their neutrons into quarks. And following this, if there's even more density, transform into different types of quarks. Ok, it might sound complicated, but basically here's what scientists think might happen as matter becomes denser and denser and as it reaches its limits before it turns into a black hole. We know that following certain types of supernova, the remnant becomes a neutron star. Or basically a star where all of the protons and electrons combine, leaving behind nothing but neutrons. But previous studies have also proposed that inside these neutron stars, especially at very large depths, even these neutrons, because of the pressure, will start transforming into something else. They'll actually start losing their confinement and will suddenly create a notion of quarks. So essentially those elementary particles everything is made out of. Here we're mostly going to have up and down quarks, but potentially some other types, because quarks tend to change into one another. But as the star becomes more and more dense, eventually most of the neutrons potentially convert into quarks, creating a hypothetical quark star. A star that might have some neutrons as the crust on top, but the insides are all quarks. In terms of mass it's going to be the same, but in terms of size it's going to be a little bit smaller. But this is not the end of the story because as you condense quarks more and more, they'll actually transform into something else in order to achieve stability. And so at super high densities, all of the quarks start to change into strange quarks. In physics this process is known as deconfinement and it's essentially a kind of a dissolution of subatomic particles that first makes quarks free particles, but eventually forces some of these quarks to combine into strange quarks, forming more and more of this strange matter. 
and the more density the star has, the more strange matter is going to have. Once again, just to clarify, this is only called strange matter because of the name of the quark, not because it's unusual or because it's weird. And it turns out that this particular matter is extremely stable. So stable as a matter of fact that once something becomes that, it's unlikely to change into something else unless there is some kind of a black hole nearby. And though it's possible for this strange matter to collapse further, forming a black hole, in theory these stars can exist for a very long time without changing anything. But all of this was basically just theory. Up until recently there were no confirmations or really anything to actually suggest these stars exist. But once in a while we discover something here and there that seems to match predictions about these strange stars. For example, a couple of years back, scientists discovered this bizarre compact object with a name you see right here that surprisingly resembled what we thought a strange star might look like. Mostly because this seemed to be some kind of a neutron star, but it was just extremely low in mass. It was about 77% of the solar mass, but extremely tiny in size and producing huge amounts of energy while also being surrounded by a supernova remnant. And even today there is still no better explanation for what exactly this is, but for all we know this is maybe one such star right here in the Milky Way galaxy. But this new observation is unique for a different reason. Because here we might have finally seen how these unusual objects are created, assuming of course scientists behind this paper are correct. And right now their explanation is technically the best. Because in this case, once again, it's difficult to explain why this explosion contained at least two but possibly three separate shocks. These very powerful episodes must have been caused by something absolutely extreme, and so a supernova or even a black hole would not produce this in this way. But here these X-ray emissions definitely confirm at least three separate events, powerful events, that happened minutes apart. And so researchers now believe they can explain all of this by combining this with ideas behind strange star formation. And so basically, that first event was the gamma ray burst, and this very likely produced some kind of a neutron star, potentially a magnetar. And intriguingly, following this first emission, there seemed to be some kind of a plateau or some sort of an X-ray afterglow that lasted for just over a minute. And to the researchers behind this paper, it suggests that this could not have been a black hole and thus very likely involved a neutron star or a magnetar that's about to do something else. And that something else happens right here. This magnetar collapses into a quark star, which results in a second explosion. And then for basically a few more minutes, we see additional afterglow and additional emissions that researchers believe was a stable period where the quark star mostly contained up and down quarks, but no strange quarks yet. And then finally we have our last transformation, where the quark star turns into the strange star as many up and down quarks transform into strange quarks and as the quark star goes through a kind of a transition stage. And in this case the quark star is actually believed to act kind of like a liquid, specifically a very homogeneous liquid, making these quark stars resemble enormous liquid objects. But this liquid stage doesn't last and the cooling of the quark star starts to transform it into the strange star with the liquid basically becoming a huge solid or potentially even a crystal. And researchers here believe that it's this cooling process that we actually observe as the X-ray afterglow, with the final product basically being a strange star in a solid crystal form. Although interestingly, in terms of properties, it's very similar to a magnetar. So the two would be very difficult to tell apart from a distance, with the main difference being the size. It would be just a little bit smaller. So basically instead of being 14 kilometers, it might be 10. But many papers also suggest that these stars would very likely contain a crust. A crust made out of neutrons. And this neutron matter crust, which is also very likely solid, sometimes collapses. And this usually happens when some kind of an accretion happens from the outside and basically a lot of matter falls onto the surface of these stars. And here, once the collapse happens, this creates a huge cascading effect that affects the entire quark star, releasing a huge amount of magnetic energy with all of this happening ridiculously fast and very likely producing very powerful radio emissions. And so today this is actually one of the main explanations for what we refer to as fast radio bursts. Mysterious radio emissions detected all over the place that you can learn more about in one of the videos in the description. And so assuming that this is indeed a formation of a strange star and assuming we can confirm the existence of these stars, this might finally explain fast radio bursts once and for all with these unusual FRBs just being the result of the interaction between the crust on top of a strange star or a quark star with some kind of a matter from the outside, and the stars themselves formed as a result of a collapse from a neutron star as it forms after the supernova. But obviously this is just one such observation, and until we find more of these gamma ray bursts, 
it's going to be impossible to prove if this is correct. As a matter of fact, there might be some additional explanations later that might actually provide evidence for something else entirely. And so, at least for now, this is just an intriguing hypothesis, and obviously that extra evidence for the existence of these bizarre objects, but not a definitive proof yet. And so, until future evidence, or until more explanations, and that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.